31st. The NFL draft well underway. Round number one Thursday night. Rounds two and three last night. And a couple local guys with a chance to get drafted today. One of them, Gordon Hill, St. Joseph of Hamilton High School grad. He joins us right now. Gordon, good morning to you. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Thanks for checking in. I know it's a big weekend for you, and we'll sort of get into your, your high school football history and college football history. But, you know, for people that don't know, you're a guy that has a chance to hear his name called sometime later today. And I know I spoke to you for a different project earlier on this weekend, but uh, I know you're a laid-back guy, but what's what's the mood right now? How are you feeling? Um, I'm still pretty relaxed. Uh, like I kind of said uh, the other day, I'm enjoying the process and just being patient. That's that's really that's all you really can do is just sit back and relax. Let's go back a little bit. Obviously, you starred for St. Joe High School in Hamilton, and you know you had a chance after that to to go on and play at Sacred Heart University in Connecticut. But let's go back to the high school level. You know, what are some of the things that you learned from Coach Sacco and the coaching staff there that you took with you to the college level that really helped you out? Uh, I mean, first first thing that comes to mind is just, you know, with Coach Chago, big thing is just uh, the weight room. Um, just, you know, work ethic and, 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 and just giving effort on the field is the biggest thing. He would uh, definitely stress to us. Um, I mean, I, we we weren't known as the most athletic team sometimes, but we would outwork our opponents. So that was something I definitely want to take from high school and bring it into my college career. So I definitely, you know, want to thank him for, for, for that and uh, instilling that in me. You played a bunch of different positions in high school. I was joking a little bit with Coach Sacco the other day. You know, you started out as a running back. He moved you to fullback. You didn't necessarily love it at first, and then you bought into the role. I know you played defense as well at the high school level. Then at Sacred Heart, standout safety. So what was that transition like? I know you know you talk to a lot of guys. They love having the rock in their hands, but you played defense at the college level, and you excelled at it. But what was the transition like going from a two-way player to primarily defense in college? Uh, it was pretty challenging, actually. Um, I mean, at first, I, I mean, everybody loves to have the ball in their hand. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's cool scoring touchdowns, and you kind of get all the glory as a running back. But at college, my coaches pretty much told me, you know, if you work hard, and and, and they, they believed in me. They said, you know, I think you'll come in and start right away. Um, and I kind of just ran with that. During camp, I just – I was just working hard, and an opportunity came, and my coach said, you know, you'll be starting week one. So I kind of, I, like I said, I never never looked back, and, and now I really embrace defense, and I look forward to it. Instead of the way I looked at it was instead of uh, getting hit by people at running back, I get to hit people. So that's definitely the upside to it. Sacred Heart and FCS school, and I know a lot of guys can can get that chip on their shoulder coming out of high school if they're not heavily recruited by BCS schools, but you sort of took it the other way. I mean, you didn't pout about it. You went to an FCS school, and you really, you know, you brought that program into prominence, you know, leading tackler on the team this year, you know, all NEC, uh, all the accolades like that. I mean, what is it about going to that FCS level you know, and standing out there because there's a lot of great football on that level. We've seen guys from those kind of schools go on to the NFL. And what was your mentality in terms of playing at the FCS level? Um, I mean, I remember just for, when I first got there as a freshman, I kind of, I kind of had a little chip on my shoulder. And um, I think a lot of guys from the FCS level have chips on their shoulders. Some because they were overlooked. And I mean, honestly, my mindset was for one personally, I wanted to come in and start right away. That was a goal of mine. And then another goal of mine was kind of change the program around. Uh, and I think I had a great class. I've got a lot of guys from, from um, South Jersey as well committed with me. And, um, I mean, our goal was really just to win it and, and change the, the you know, that the, the, the program. I mean, we, we were 2-9 and nine our first season, or 5-6 and six our first season, then 2-9. And, and then once that junior class, my class, came in um, and we were juniors, we kind of, you know, we were in positions of power. And we just wanted to make a difference um, and win. I mean, coming from St. Joe's, uh, we were always a winning program. So it was kind of tough for me those first two years <laughs> to have some losing season. So, I mean, we kind of just said, look, we need to do what we do. We know we have the talent, and we put it out on the field, and we were successful. Checking in right now with Gordon Hill. Uh, Sacred Heart standout, St. Joe of Hamilton standout. Gordon with a chance to hear his name called later today in the NFL draft or possibly uh, be invited to a team as a free agent. Now, Gordon, you know, it's kind of cool because you grew up with Max Vallis. Of course, you played with him at St. Joe. He went on to Virginia. He's got a chance to hear his name called later today as well. And, you know, for our listeners that don't know, how close are you guys? I mean, you go back a little ways even uh, maybe playing some video games in, in the basement, right? 
Oh, yeah, definitely. I have a whole lot of video games in the basement. Um, I actually just was over at Max's house yesterday. I stopped by before the draft uh, started, and we hung out for a little bit, just talk, you know, just about this whole experience and just about the future and a little, you know, reminisce about the past a little bit and talked about all those days when we were on vacation down south with our families and, and just dreaming about this, these moments. So now, I mean, it's, you know, it's it's really close. So, we have a lot of work, uh, ahead of us, and we're kind of just waiting for that moment. You told me the other day, I mean, the hard work is still ahead of you. And, you know, you got to step back and think about that for a minute. But you'd love to get the opportunity, whether you're drafted or invited as a free agent. But, you know, it, it makes sense. The hard work is ahead of you. Even if you were drafted or invited to a team to sign, I mean, you still have to go out and, and prove yourself, right? I mean, no, nothing is guaranteed, certainly, at the NFL level. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is cool. I mean, you know, it's cool just to, to see the draft on TV. I know a lot of friends and family are very supportive and, you know, excited for us. But as players, we know that, like I, like we both said, the hard work is, is ahead of us. I mean, camp is going to be a grind. Um, it's going to challenge us physically, mentally. And, um, I mean, it's part of the game. You know, it's part of the game. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Gordon, what was that moment, you know, whether it was in high school or in college, when you finally realized, hey, this could happen, I could get a legitimate shot uh, to get a look in the NFL, was there one sort of aha moment? Did it sort of build up over time? Um, I know after my sophomore year of college, I kind of had a lot of confidence going into my junior year. And I remember my first game against Maris, my junior year, I just dominated that game. And uh, after after that, I had, my, my confidence even boosted even more. And I was like, you know what? I could play with anybody, and and that was kind of that was kind of the, the point where I, I knew I had the ability. What's the process been like in terms of working out for the NFL teams? I mean, some coaches you grew up watching on TV, now they're sitting in a room watching you work out. What's that been like? Oh, it's, it's very exciting, very exciting. Um, I know a pro day was it was a little at first. Um, my first couple of like, drills I had to do. I was a little nervous there, um, but once I kind of got in the flow of things after my bench and after my vert, I kind of relaxed. And I was like, you know what? You know, this is this is just, this is things you've been doing your whole life. You jump, you know, you you broad jump, you you run like so. I kind of calmed down, and it, but it was pretty cool. And then, um, I mean, as far as meeting these coaches on different visits, at first it was kind of it was surreal, but I mean now I'm really relaxed and I kind of just got into, I guess, the flow of things. So. Like I said, I'm just enjoying this process and, and looking forward to these next couple of hours. South Jersey Sports Report catching up with Gordon Hill right now. Hill, a former St. Joe of Hamilton standout, along with teammate Max Vallis, both those guys with a chance to get drafted later today in the NFL draft. Gordon, I mean, it's it's been a long journey for you, and you know this is sort of a different topic altogether. But you really have a, a pretty impressive story, amazing, you know, miracle, whatever you want to call it. But let our listeners know, you know, j- j- the fact that you're here playing football based on what you went through, even as an infant, I mean, is just amazing. And I know it's something you're comfortable talking about, and it's sort of a, a story of-, of overcoming or beating the odds, right? Yeah, so when I was three months old, I was internally bleeding in my head, and I had emergency surgery. I had to get my head cut open, and, and um, I want to say I, I got a blood transfusion, and and yeah, it was it was it was pretty bad. And I remember my parents, as I got older, telling me that the doctors told told them that I was either going to be mental, mentally or physically challenged. So just the fact that you know I've been playing football my whole life, it's just been a miracle. So I've just been very fortunate and been very blessed. So just this opportunity coming up is just this dream come true. Come true, and I really have to just appreciate every day because I mean I really. If you ask some doctors, I shouldn't be in this, in this situation. So I've just been really blessed and very fortunate. Really an amazing story. I know you, you stood out at safety at the college level, but where have teams been looking at you in terms of projections for the NFL? I know there's a number of different positions they would like you at, and I know special teams at the end of the day might be that ticket to catch on. Oh, yeah. Special teams is definitely the, the, the number one thing. Teams definitely want me to contribute right away uh, on, but as far as position um some teams like me at safety um as well as other teams like the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers they like me at outside linebacker so it really just depends um as well as like a, a dime a dime or a nickelback uh teams also have have mentioned things like that so it really just depends on fit and I think 
you know, once you get to camp and the coaches see how you can, you know, gel with the other players, you kind of just – things just kind of unfold and you kind of find yourself in a certain position. You mentioned the Tampa Bay Buccaneers there. I know you worked out for the Kansas City Chiefs. Who are some of the other squads that, that took a good look at you? Um, the San Diego Chargers. I had a visit with them, and I also had a workout with the Indianapolis Colts. So a handful of teams keeping their eye on Gordon Hill here as the later rounds of the NFL draft come up. Gordon, you know, I talked to you in person the other day, and when I asked you where you wanted to meet, you know, you didn't think twice about it. You wanted to go to the, the St. Joe Wildcats weight room, and, you know, I know some other guys that, that are home from school or on break, you know, like to stop by and check out the, the, the current team and talk to Coach Sacco. What is it about that that family atmosphere that's there in Hamilton at St. Joe that even guys like you – brink of the NFL, going on to star in college. You guys always seem to find your way back there uh, when you have the time. Um, I think it's just Coach Sacco. Uh, I mean, he's been a staple in the program and really just the community in Hamilton altogether. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of the guys, we, we look at him as a father figure in our lives. And, um, I mean, he's, he's always there. You know, he's, he's always there. He's, he always has great, great um, advice. And I, I guess it's the success that he has um, helped us with in our lives kind of brings us back to him you know so he's just he's just a good role model and an even better person is it crazy to think all the great players that have gone through st joe i mean you talk about uh jack corcoran getting a cup of coffee in the nfl he wasn't drafted you and max are the first two guys have a chance to really be drafted is that sort of tough to wrap your mind around yeah it is uh i remember growing up uh watching highlights of um of uh, of jack and and a lot of other guys on his on his uh, on his team, and just to think, yeah, you know, we're in a position just like him. It's not you know a better position. It's just amazing. It's kind of like wow, you know, I looked up to these guys growing up, and you know, I can I can just be as successful as them. It's just it's just a great opportunity. Gordon, what do you have planned for later today? Getting together with some uh, friends and family. Yeah, just family. I'm just I'm home right now, just hanging out with mom and dad, and I think my grandparents and my sisters and my little nephews are coming over. So. Just going to watch the draft, sit back, and relax. I know you're a whatever happens, happens uh, kind of guy, but I'll ask you one last question. You know, it, people don't realize sometimes it's better maybe not to be drafted in the sixth or seventh round, and then you get as catch on as a preferred free agent. I mean, do you have a preference? Sure, it's cool to hear your name called in the draft, but if you were not to be drafted, you could really get to choose where you would go. Do you have a preference at this point? Nah, I don't have a preference. Um, I kind of did early on. Um, I grew up as an Eagles fan. Um, and then I had a, I had a really, 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 I had my favorite player was, uh, Priest Holmes because I was a running back in high school and, uh, when I, in Little League. So Priest Holmes was my favorite running back. And then Larry Johnson kind of, you know, took command of the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Kansas City Chiefs for a brief period were my favorite team. Um, and then the fact that Coach Reed was there, it kind of was like a perfect storm. But I mean, initially going through, through this process, I was like, wow, like I'm my first visit to Kansas City. And I was excited about that, but now I—I I mean, honestly, everybody. I, I really, you know, it doesn't matter. I just want an opportunity to keep playing football, and that's all that matters. All right, Gordon Hill. Appreciate you taking the time. I know a lot of people around South Jersey uh, really hoping your name is called later today. Really hoping Max Vallis's name is called as well. Good luck to both of you, and again, uh, hope to catch up with you soon. Uh, hopefully, on an NFL roster. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Gordon Hill. Everybody from. Uh, Sacred Heart University and former St. Joe of Hamilton standout football player.